Welcome bald. I mean back. I'm back. And bald. And uh, this is me and the Q3 in Paris. So I started down at Concorde, which is one of the famous landmarks, and then walked up through the gardens up towards the Louvre. And these are the photos that I found along the way. So statue and the girl's arm and construction. I love construction. And so this is the element that I found that I wanted to keep sort of playing with this um, massive billboard because you know that's not going to be a construction site forever it's definitely not going to be an enormous billboard forever um, you know everything's heritage around there so just the fact that they have scaffolding even the scaffolding needs to look like the building behind it and then somehow Apple must have paid nine billion dollars to turn it into an enormous ad so can't see that happening again once that building is complete so yeah it makes for an interesting element and i was just playing around with it i'm not sure who antone dupont is but maybe he's a famous french rugby player i assume um yeah so portrait definitely wasn't the crop for this shot i found this lady feeding all these pigeons and then i realized ooh, leading lines flip the screen out if i get a bit lower and i was sort of rushing so i didn't stop the dji from shaking around usually i just grab it once i squat down and i can keep it still and a bit less seasick style i'm not 100 percent sure which of these is my favorite i think like so that one the bird on the right is jumping the little bird and it's sort of matching the dive of the rugby player guy but then the other one where it's a bit more simple and the bird is just sort of covering the lady's head is nice too i don't know let me know what you think i'm sort of torn between the two hello darkness my old friend but yeah i was pretty happy with those all right so that was it we got the leading lines down here see if I can sort of recreate it sort of like this with all of these pigeons and the lady feeding them and her white hair it's perfect or as perfect as I could hope for um, but yeah let's head over to the chaos over at the Louvre and see what else we can get but I noticed this guy flipping around and standing on his head and stuff, so obviously interesting. And again, I was like, oh, do I try and keep the enormous billboard in or try and just use this statue? I gave him like a little thumbs up tried to say you know I was gonna be taking photos hoping that he'd just go about his business because yeah, it was pretty obvious he was like when he was standing on his head he was just looking at me walking towards him taking photos so <laughs> wasn't really fooling anyone that you know and he's the only one in this little dead end of the garden so it was yeah it was uh obvious i was gonna just be taking photos of him but yeah anyway cool element this statue billboard and the guy was sort of doing a similar pose to the statue so i was like "Ooh, let's work with that how do i focus in on just that pose get close yeah but anyway he was um yeah, he, I don't think he was too keen to be a model, so I headed off. And those that know the gardens well will know that this actually came before the stuff you've just seen, but I saw this little group of people. I don't know if it's just like a PT class with like a, a sort of niche towards learning acrobatics or what it is, but you can see there's like the little poles on the right there that someone could potentially do a handstand on if they were very strong and talented um but yeah i was just sort of hanging back a bit like the handstands were cool but it wasn't like oh wow these are amazing compositions i need to rush in there and uh, freak everybody out so i just thought i'd see how it progressed a couple of people started doing handstands this is again i was trying to figure out how i used that 
billboard rugby player guy as uh, an element in the background, but it was a bit too far away at this point, so I sort of gave up trying to make the image about that background element um, and just sort of use what I had in front of me. Um, but yeah, it was sort of uh, pretty soon I think I realized that the little blankets and bags and stuff on the ground over there, it was actually two really old little dogs <laughs> sitting there as well, just sort of hanging out. And um, yeah, how can you, how can you ignore it? But yeah, so I just sort of hung around, you know, making myself known, trying to find like some balance in the composition. Chuck a chuck and a thumbs up uh, and a nod when people look my way. But yeah, so these these are the dogs. This little whippet, like whippets are just skin and bone as is, and they're tiny little things. But this guy was old. He's got like the full grey face, and he just looks so sleepy. Um, but yeah. It sort of gave good balance to the image. Had the cool background of the grand old building. We've got like the the hoarding of the construction site that sort of breaks up the image and provides a, another bit of a background. Again, just giving, I guess, the dog's owner a bit of a nod. Might have been a bit worried I was about to run off with his dog or his bag or something, so. Oop. All right, seasick DJI. Oop, caught it. All right. But yeah, these are pretty cool photos. But I did, so the thing is, I had it on F16 because I was hoping to get everything in focus. But I had the Leica set to phase focus. So it was only, like I thought, like I could see it was focusing um, on the dog in the foreground, but I thought it would be keeping everything else in focus. But even at like F16 phase, um, picking something up in the foreground just sort of doesn't do it. So I learned from that point on that if I did want to do photos like that, um, to use the spot focus and um, yeah, so set the spot focus at the back um, and then everything in the foreground would be in focus as well. So yeah, up at the Louvre, not really anything, yeah, too interesting, at least for me, you know, everyone just doing the same boring tourist photos, um, or waiting in lines, or, yeah, there wasn't too much happening. Um, but actually, this is from the first day when I arrived there, and that's my first attempt at trying to do something with that, with that rugby player. So I think this was on the first day as well. It's a bit more gloomy and yeah, it just sort of became really overcast and rainy later. But yeah, I spotted this guy with his catch me if you can shirt. I think he was like an ice cream vendor or no, the crepe guy. Yeah, ice cream guy. And you had to dodge these like signature scammers too. I don't know if you guys have heard about that. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to get bubbles near this catch me if you can guy. That one popped on his elbow, so. That was an all right one. And there's, yeah, this cool mirror building. Nothing, I couldn't get interesting elements to happen right up against the glass. I like that little bubble above that girl's head um, with the catch me if you can guy. Again, it's just like something that most people probably wouldn't even notice. So it's just a photo that I like. But yeah, I realized later on that there was like, again, the signature scammer guys. <laughs> These people dressed in like full 1800s period, like there must be like some period piece getting shot down the road. Cause I saw a few of them walking around after this. Yeah, and just trying to make weird compositions from the weird mirror building. Lots of circular elements here. This nice round hat, the circular grates of the, I don't know, drain of whatever that thing is, air vent. Um, and then, of course, the sculpture in the background. Also spotted another Q user, represent. Probably should have said hi, but again, I was filming. Thought it'd be a bit weird. 
Um, so this happened like pretty quickly. I was like, oh, if I could find like a bald guy touching his head or something, that'd be cool. And then like this guy with a shaved head and his girlfriend touching her head walked past. Here I, um, yeah, didn't film properly, but I like that photo with the girl with the stripe on her pants getting onto the stripey columns, whatever they are. Yeah, this is a cool little bit just up from the Louvre. Or this brother holding his little brother so he doesn't fall in the fountain. Straight after that, like as I was walking away, the smaller kid like got his face there and just started like trying to drink all the water and his mum's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, this guy, he, I don't think he was actually homeless. I think he just had like a m massive night. This was in the morning. Um, and uh, brings me on to a little bit of a shout out to a new YouTube channel called um, Wrong Side of the Lens. You should go watch the Daniel Arnold episode where he talks about, because there's a general rule, you know, in street photography where like taking photos of homeless people is just so boring and it's easy and, you know, uh, exploitative because yeah they, they live on the street they have they haven't made the conscious decision to go out on the street and do things they're just there and you're just like oh they're an easy target so yeah a lot of people frown on the whole um taking photos of homeless people which is good but also um daniel arnold talks about how um it's also a big reality of life in new york for him and especially for me here in paris it's a big reality of Paris. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw um, the viral TikTok about Paris that was sort of going off while I was over there. First of all, Paris stink. It smelled like piss, cheese and armpit. Which made it even more relevant. But yeah, Paris is like portrayed as this amazing place where everyone saves up all their money to go over to this Hollywood fantasy land of a place. But really, it's uh, quite polarized. So there's obviously a lot of amazing beauty and history and money uh, but there's also a lot of poverty and crime and yeah sort of darker side to it too so figured I'd include that one in there and again I don't think he was homeless I think he was just shit face so <laughs> but it's uh, an interesting thing to think about um, so yeah go watch wrong side of the lens I'll leave a link in the description for that as well um, I as soon as he dropped them all um, so he did like a a premiere in New York and then after the premiere just put them all up on YouTube and I binged everything in like one sitting so go check it out really good street photography content if you weren't already aware oh and please subscribe if you want thank you <laughs>